For whatever reason, Marcus Smart gets less and less popular as you get further away from the season. Um, and so it's always what you remember what he did last. And what he did last yeah. was take 75 shots in a game uh, that they lost to the Heat. And everybody's mad and seems to be getting madder about it. And again, Celtics don't have a lot of options for trades right now. So Marcus... It's a he's it's a double whammy with him. He's getting hit both ways. The recent memory of him is a guy who's undisciplined and jacking too many shots and doesn't fit with the players you have, which again isn't entirely true because he is a distributor and they actually play well when he's on the floor. He just has those moments like game six where he's got to rein it in, and he's that's happened before. Uh, the other is he's really only the tradable. He's really got the only guy with a tradable salary uh, and the only asset that you can deal. So naturally his name's going to come up. So uh, one trade that came up and I'm going to start with it here and then we'll kind of kick around other possibilities on the Simmons and Zach Lowe podcast, uh, a theoretical swap with, nope, you hate it. Pavano doesn't like it. No, <laughs> he, uh, he already hates it. That's a lead off. Simmons, come on. Well, Simmons, it's so funny. Simmons is the boomer devil for young Celtics fans out there, okay? Yo. Uh, oh, so I love just, yeah, you nailed it. That's exactly what, yeah. He is, he is, he is just bad boomer. You know, nobody wants to hear <laughs> anything coming out of his mouth. But this scenario was smart uh, to man. Golden State. Smart plus 14, I believe, to Golden State for the number two pick, which, again, it's an uninspired draft. We could kick around some of the players who might be there, and we'll let Bobby spitball at that. But at face value, does this is this a deal that you would do if you're the Celtics? Let's start with uh, start with Joe Sway, he because obviously he's not liking it. Absolutely, one hundred percent not. Like I don't understand why people completely forget. And I love the way you led into this uh, conversation with Marcus Smart. Like how soon they forget? Do we forget? the old Marcus Smart, like that was the guy that's all of a sudden returned and, and he's like characterized as being that guy just because he had a really, you know, tough series. Let's face it. Yeah, of course. He jacked up shots. He, uh, you know, poor decision-making down the stretch. Yeah, all that, all the above. But I mean, overall, all season long, he hasn't been that guy. You know, he's, he's come a long way from, from jacking up shots and, and, and just taking terrible uh, opportunities, you know, and I just think everyone is just sort of giving him a, a bad rap. This is a huge part of the Celtics' identity, and if the Celtics aren't drooling over a top two pick that they really think they could plug in and make an immediate impact, which I, I just don't see it, honestly, that someone that can really uh, that's worth giving up, someone like Marcus Smart, and giving him giving him up just like that. Like I, I just think it's he's just too valuable to throw in a trade like that for someone that you're not 100 percent sure is going to fit and put the Celtics over the top. If it's not putting you over the top, then I don't want to hear the, the the proposed deal. And most of these deals have been so bad. I mean, this one isn't up there, but like people are just throwing Marcus Smart in trades that they, he shouldn't, he just doesn't belong in. It's It's been ridiculous. In a different draft, the idea of trading up into pick number two exactly. would, be very, would be very enticing. In a different so, draft, right. I'm still, you know, call me a sucker. I'm still looking at like, you just got to – you have your pick of everybody but one player. That just means you have – you got to just nail one. It, it, and it's just in, – it's enticing for me. It, 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 to go up that high in the draft is enticing even so if – This is the thing. That with rookies, they need time, and time could be more than a year. We exactly. think of a James Wiseman. Yeah, you're going to take a step back. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing about trading any one of the pieces on this team. And it's fun because the idea of mixing things up and shaking things up is always intriguing. But ultimately, the Celtics, looking back toward 2015 now, and Marcus Smart being the center point of that, have developed year in and year out, progressed. Besides 2019, we all know what happened there. They, they've taken the step to being – a veteran team, even the younger pieces on this team, Brown, Tatum, like they're foremost players in this league at this point. So a smart, I, I, I get why his name gets thrown around because the contract's good. It can match with almost anybody. And it's enticing for other teams because he, as we talked about in our last episode, can be that chemistry piece for a team. But I think no matter what, the Celtics are losing something there because you guys talk about the offense. What about the defense? He was just all defense, had one of the best defensive seasons of his career. And that's as critical as anything for a championship. And he's going to be on the bench. I keep saying this. If the team's healthy, he'll be a bench player. And if they're not, they're screwed anyway. As an aside, I'm going <laughs> to say this about Marcus Smart in defense, okay? And it doesn't. the conversation doesn't have to go here. But I love what he does, uh, you know, uh, 
on the defensive side of the ball and he makes plays in the whole winning plays thing. But honestly, he's not a great on the ball defender against quicker guards and he gets eaten a lot. He gets eaten alive in those matchups. But with the team really- defense and team defense. Yeah, and team defense is great. Right. That energy is contagious, John. Team Wait, defense let, let's is face great. it. He's made some other defenders look way better just from being out there. The team defense is great, and he does make plays all over the place in the energy and the attitude. Absolutely. Boxing out. I, I think that's – but his individual on-the-ball defense, when that's you're like, fair. stop that guy. Yeah. When that he's guy is these quick, juky guards, he's not able to do that. Right. So – that to me, it's different if you can neutralize those guys, uh, 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 Murray, a uh, Booker, and again, you're not facing these guys left and right. I, I but I, I think he struggles uh, with 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 a lot of these players. So, separately, uh, Jimmy, your thoughts just initially. And again, what's funny is this trade was like laughed off as something the Celtics would never in a million years think of. So people are so adamantly against it. I don't think it's a total slam dunk. No, do you? No, it, it's listen. I, I think. When Danny Ainge is interested in uh, a draft prospect, we usually hear about it, right? One way or another through the grapevine, we know, you know, he's either showing up to some sort of, you know, tournament, game, event, whatever. We kind of hear. I haven't heard that about any of the players in this draft. I mean, specifically with this draft, it's not a deep draft. We know that. Um, But in terms of Marcus Smart as the trade chip, I'm not against that. Now, I'm not like actively shopping Marcus Smart, but I understand if I'm the Celtics that if I want to improve my team in one aspect, I know I'm not trading Tatum. I know I'm not trading Brown, right? Those are the two untradeables. I'm not sure what you can get for a Kemba Walker trade. Uh, We're going to talk about Gordon Hayward, but on the last year of his, you're pretty limited there. Marcus Smart gives you value not only from what he can provide on the court, but what what his contract um what his contract is so if you're looking to improve in one area marcus smart is a is a, a valuable piece and some uh, an asset that a lot of teams would be interested in because of all the reasons you guys talked about why you don't want to trade him how how he is on defense team defense what he brings to the team his intensity um you know he's a veteran in this league now believe it or not and i think he can help a winning team so why can't he help the Celtics? well he can he has and i think maybe he his role obviously changed in the bubble when Gordon Hayward went down and he was doing a lot more than what maybe we wanted to see him do. And it's give or take with him, right? I mean, his gift is his curse at times. And I think like Johnson, when he first started off the video, it's Marcus Smart's very like, what have you done for me lately? So the last thing you remember of Marcus Smart is the shot checking, but there are some games when he's diving over the court and he makes the crazy pass or the big rebound. He is a versatile defender, but he's not a shutdown defender like John said. But let me ask, let me, let me, let me ask this, okay? Because this is what's funny. I love these. I remember at NBC, I did a, a we did a, we did a segment back with like potential trades. This was the year that they picked Tatum, and they had the number one pick, and it was like, okay, oh, you want to trade year. up and get Leonard? You want to do this? You want to do that? So came up with a bunch of trade hypotheticals. And my favorite thing about that segment was both sides were furious saying they would never do it okay that's it, this trade right <laughs> and that's this trade yeah it, warriors are like are you freaking kidding and that's the thing about this you're gonna give the number two pick for this friggin ham and egger who you know 34 <laughs> percent three-point shooter who plays some defense a gritty glue guy i don't want that i want stars and that's the whole thing is it's the promise of what may come from something like the two pick of a potential potential third star you gotta home grow these things this is where i'm this is why i'd be for it but who though who here's the thing it doesn't matter yeah it doesn't matter you know it does matter you you know where your ceiling we want you know where your ceiling is now which is play everything perfect have no injuries possibly get to the finals and then who knows what maybe for the next year or two or just next year but in order to get to that next level you're gonna need a third star to to the next to put with Tatum and Brown, and chances are you're not going to be able to go super max sign that guy in 2023 because you're going to have one of those teams that has three players and then friggin' nothing, Mm -hmm. okay, if you can make the money work. So the best path to that is home grow it. you got to find a way to – it would have been great if you hit a home run on – a hero again we're not gonna say hero is that guy but it would be great if you hit a home run with one of your non-lottery or lower lottery picks but right now this is the best chance you're gonna get to get a guy and again this is a hypothetical trade but i do this every day of the week and 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 i because 
it's just possible that you hit that home so, John, run. I'm not looking for next year. Your, your championship why? window is this short if you stay with what you've got right now. It's two years. Or you possibly extend it into, into the Jalen and Jason's prime by hitting a home run. And I would absolutely take that swing. Okay, but that that makes sense nope, of what wait, you're no. saying. <laughs> but at the same time, Josue is all in. Okay. At the same just time, you're, you're, me and then Josue. Yeah. Okay. What you're saying makes sense. You obviously want to spread out the wealth, and you want to have ro you want to have guys rotating into your into your roster that contribute at all different times of their careers, right? But if you're the Celtics, you're at a point now where you were, you know, you you, you can make the case that you should have been in the NBA Finals. You're right there. Again, I'm not against trading for Marcus, trading Marcus Smart or Gordon Hayward, but do you trade them for a complete a prospect, somebody you have no idea on, somebody that's not going to help you theoretically next year that much, right? Maybe it could to an extent, but when you make a trade like that, don't you want to make sure you're getting something back that you like a proven commodity, something that can help you take you from Eastern Conference fin Finals to NBA Finals? And I just don't know if you're the Celtics. If that's the trade that's going to do that for you now, if you're the if you're the Golden State Warriors, I mean that's exactly why they would make the trade, right? Because they're they're having their guys all come back, and they're at the cusp of going from right. you know this might great be to even greater if they bring yeah. Marcus Smart on. So they're they're are, they're saying, well, we don't think we need a, a top prospect because we're built for NBA Finals already. The Celtics could make that case, except they're set a little bit more for the future. And obviously, if you want to talk about homegrown products, you can just look at the Warriors because that's why they are where they are. And the Celtics Curry, are Clay. starting down that path because exactly. you've already got two. Right. So why do I you agree they're starting down the that path? path. Yeah. John? No, but What's that? Like, why would you stray from the path? I'm not. I would continue because on. They, it, may have, I, they may have. They may have hit their their peak. Where they, I believe they may not be their, able to go any better. I believe they've hit well, their the, peak. the case okay. is. Hold on. Let me, let me get into it. Go, 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 go. Go. Yeah. Okay. So the, the the reason I say it like that is because look, Danny H has orchestrated this thing somewhat perfectly, right? Not perfect, but nothing's going to be perfect in this league, right? So what I mean by that is you have Marcus Smart at what making what 13, 12 million, right? What a steal! Yeah. Plenty of value there, right? Jalen Brown, and I think this is a move that has been so like overlooked. You lock in Jalen Brown for that amount of dollars, right? Compared to what Jamal Murray made, what we, I don't even want to go down that road. But just, you know, I'm throwing that out there just so you can use that, you know, <laughs> to compare to what Jalen Brown's making. That's a steal and a half, guys. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, these guys need to turn into the Kawhi Leonard and Paul George of the Eastern Conference. Now, look, I know the Clippers didn't do well. I know that story Jesus. didn't do well. But what I mean by that is these two guys need to take control of the team. They need to lead the team. You had these two guys locked in. You have Marcus Smart. You know, that's a bargain right there. Why are you going to shake the rock the boat and trade someone like Marcus? I'm greedy. I'm greedy. I want a third star. Is that a huge? Will Marcus Smart here? allow them? Will Marcus Smart allow them to take the reins, or will he do more of the performances that we saw? See, that's the thing. Look, I'm right. not. I'm adamant. What happened? I'm adamant. The conference finals. Look, I just think this team has been around each other for quite some time. That they can they can iron those things out. Like I don't think it's the end of the world. Are this they good enough? Yeah, to I'm win? adamant. This team doesn't need I'm to make a drastic trade. It just I don't see. It. They're they're good enough to win, Jimmy. I just think their health's fleeting, which we've seen the last couple of years, and they don't have the depth to sustain when they lose one of their core guys. Now, if they're able to maintain this group for years to come with the Hayward restructure, which is a possibility out of all of this as well, I still think they're in a pretty good spot with their top-end talent to contend. And if they can mix in one good draft pick, it feels like they'll yeah. have enough of depth there. But uh, the, what John describes here is important because they don't have tradable contracts into the future, especially if you lose Hayward and you're not filling out that – um, spot there and smart does only have two contracted years left so what you're looking at here is you want to contend now but you also want to have assets alongside brown and tatum for all the years they're going to be here because then you get into the back end of their deals and you still want this to be a competitive team mm -hmm. i don't like giving up a championship window which is what you're ultimately doing i feel like if you're trading market smart for lesser value but it is smart to have tradable contracts, assets in the form of draft picks, uh, things that you can carry into the future to, as John said, make that big strike, 
pulling another star in yeah. the ensuing years because this group ultimately does only have one or two years when we think about Kemba's health too to win a championship and years, that could fly and they fast. might not be they might have swung and missed you know because we don't know one injury and you're done yeah we so and you we don't say that know about, like every right. team Right, but the best part, and, and, the, and the best thing about that is, I mean, not to put it this way, but you guys know what I mean. Like, Kemba Walker, if, if that was the case for someone like Jason or Jalen, like, I, I still think these two guys are on their way up. Obviously, Kemba is where he's at in his career. And, you know, this, these next two years are so crucial because they're probably going to be – it's going to be down a hill after that. You're a little bit worried about Kemba's health moving forward. But, again, I, I think you if you can somewhat go into uh, – you know, limiting his minutes throughout the course of the regular season, making sure he's good to go, you know, come to the postseason. I, I think Jalen Brown is that good. I think Jason Tatum is that good. You know, we, we're going to see an all-star season from from Jason, uh, from Jalen yeah, Brown. See, I think this is where, we agree on that. This, we but that's the thing is, two, yeah. I, I think this is the problem with the Marcus Smart debate. You I just know, think you're locked into that window. A lot of people think when you try to get rid of him, you're getting rid of him because you don't like him. It's not that. No, that's not right. It. Yeah. That isn't it. It's like Bobby said, and I was saying earlier, is you're doing it to, you know, you always have to manage now and down the road. You're you're not this is not win now or bust when you have when your core players are 22 and 21. You know what I mean? Is like that, that's not what you're worried about winning now. You theoretically have a seven, eight year window to build this roster around these people and, and make sure that when you know you get to the point where Tatum's going to start to have choices, that you have something here that's worth staying. Because the one thing you don't want is Mr. Friggin' LA or, you know, uh, you know, a 25 year old guy looking around and like Miami's kind of cool. I you know, just say that. Yeah. Alice, worry. Alice is on the you rise. Know, there's some there's some legitimate destinations rising, and LA is trying to get off that UL Dang yeah, contract. Yeah, so you got to worry about that. Third match. You have to. You're as much managing for. I got to keep these guys here and happy, and make sure that I've got the team that they stay. You don't want a Giannis situation, or you don't want a Ka Ka Kawhi, whatever it is. You don't want people looking around like Kyrie like, Irving situation. Set. Kyrie. Kyrie. So New Jersey's fine. So that's that could be part of the problem is you have to constantly be building there. For again, for me, the Marcus thing, I would take that swing even if it makes you a little bit worse because I'm not as let, let, let me throw some let me let me throw some more enticing names at you guys because you're not gonna get excited about the draft because those guys are years away from being important players. But I do think there's two teams out there that would be interesting team partners for Boston. I look at Orlando on the Hayward side. We talk about Nikola Vucevic. Uh, Aaron Gordon, those kind of guys, because they're flatlining out there. And I think a Hayward to mix things up there would be intriguing for a team like that. And I look to Sacramento on the smart front because that's a team that had been interested in him in the past. And they're going to have to trade Buddy Heald because of discontent there. I mean, it feels like he need, he wants to be out of there. So that's those are two names that I'm looking that's at. That's a lot of money on Heald. That's a lot of yeah. shooting. But is he a better a fit of offensively? Yeah. You would do that Boston to Marcus then. Smart. You would, you would send him. Sacramento, man. It's not me. It's not me. It's Danny. That's just painful. I can I'm hide good. behind Danny. Though. You're good with both of those. All right. Well, I mean, those are the kind of names that I think can at least maintain the Celtics status if they're moving on from either one of those guys. It sounds like Joe enough. Sway wants to retire Marcus Smart's number next year. He won't entertain not yet. Marcus Smart. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> man. I like Vucevic. Don't, go, don't get me wrong. I mean, I like Vucevic a lot, but if you're the, if you're the magic, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if you're that if you're eager to push that button and you're thinking Gordon Hayward is going to be, you know, this is a couple of years ago and all injuries aside, maybe, but now, I mean, he's 30, not to say that he's older, but all these injuries, I mean, teams are just scared of him. I honestly well, believe he's that. Real. You wouldn't go Anthony Edwards at the two pick there. No, no? I don't like him. Okay. Is there anyone that you, you guys. I Wiseman mean, seems to be the Anthony consensus. Edwards, but uh, but he's he's probably not NBA. Re he's going to be a uh, year or two. That's how bigs go. Yeah, and, and especially a big that time didn't play a lick last year. You know. Yeah, yeah. He he shows a lot of promise in the way uh, the big out there in Phoenix did, but more less refined uh, to me. And he's going to need some work. He's going to need some smoothing over. Like he he honestly would be good for Golden State because they have more of a. A uh, system around where he won't have to do as much. He can just play 18, 20 minutes a game. And in Boston, they'll be counting on him as the starter. So that wouldn't be ideal. Well, all right. Well, so Marcus, 
again, that's not going anywhere. It's going to keep getting no. talked about the merits of doing so. And you're going to hear a bunch of different scenarios on that. 